today's video you draw me back in the E92 M3 and on today's video I'm going to go through how to install a set of BMW M4 seats in your car and have it all working like a factory original seat. So just before we get underway the items you're going to require today are obviously a set of M4 front seats. Now the reason you go with the M4 over the M3, the F80, is you do need the feature where the seat folds forward so you can still get people in the back. So I've only tried it with the M4 seats. If you've got an LCI car, so basically the facelift, this process is going to be a little bit easier for you because under the seats there is a module that controls the heated seats and all the memory effect. Now unfortunately the pre-facelift cars, if you look under your seats and you've got a black module, are not going to work. So you'll bolt them in, they'll power up for 10 seconds and then they'll fault and they won't work with the canvas correctly. So if you do want this to work like OEM, regardless of whether you have a facelift or a pre-facelift car, you will need the white modules from an E9 series car. If you've got heated seats, they will need to be heated modules as well, otherwise you will lose the heated feature. And it is important to get the left and the right side. But for me, because I've got the facelift LCI car, I could take the seat modules off the original seat and they clip and plug straight into these with no chopping. So the first thing you're gonna to need to do when fitting the seats is move the seats all the way forward, undo the two bolts at the rear of the seat, move it all the way backwards, and do the two bolts at the front of the seat. Now that's the only thing that holds it bolted into the car. Now once that's done, you will need to disconnect the negative from the battery, give it 10 minutes to let everything discharge in the airbag system, and then you can unplug the main loom. And if you've got an LCI car, you'll also have a head restraint loom. Now I'll touch on this later in the video when it goes into the coding, but in the M4 seats, we don't have any active headrests. In a facelift E92, in the event of a crash, they'll essentially pop forward and they're meant to stop or reduce at least whiplash, whereas pre-facelift cars don't have that. So it's a little bit easier in that sense on the pre-facelift cars, but as you're gonna to need to do some coding anyway, it doesn't really make much difference. It's definitely easier on a facelift car because you'll have the correct modules under your seat ready to go. So with the seats removed and obviously the uh, connections all unplugged, you then need to move the seats to a suitable working area. Now I bought them back into the house and the first thing you'll need to do is move over all the seat belt buckle. Now you're gonna use the original E9 series buckle as I say, it will bolt straight on to the M4 seat, but it just makes it easier with the loom. Once you've started flipping the seat over, you can then start doing all the plug and the loom. Now, the good news is you don't need to chop anything at all on the car. It really is just plug and play. Where it gets complicated is you've got to repin the plugs into the E9 plug from the M4 wiring loom. It'll all make sense once you take it apart. If you're not confident working with tools or electrical systems, I would advise taking it to a specialist. It's not difficult, but it's also not straightforward. And the last thing you want to do is start crosswiring things and causing yourself some potential permanent damage. But follow this guide, I say at your own risk. It's what I've learned from looking online. It's not a brilliant guide because I've been learning as I've been going along, but I've been trying to make sure I blog as much of it as possible because I know you, a lot of you have been really curious to know what it's like to have the M4 seats in which thankfully it is a straight bolt in, but getting the heated seats working, getting the memory function working and making sure the electrics work like the original equipment. So with the seats in the house ready to be worked on, it's pretty straightforward. You'll be greeted by the yellow main plug that's the harness to the car. And what you need to do is just lift the tabs and the little plugs inside for the airbags, for the pre-tensioners, and all the sort of module wires all just slide out and you'll be left with a black connector. I think it was a blue connector or a gray one for your airbag. And essentially you just need to remove all that and then undo the buckle from the E9 series seat to transfer over to the M4 seat. Next, you'll need to put the M4 seat on the bench. And like I say, what you'll need to do is also undo that main harness plug. And as you slide the connector out, you'll see that the plugs are a different shape, but all the colors look pretty similar. Now the E9 series seats have two earths whereas the M4 seat only has one earth, so you only need the one cable pickup. Again, I didn't get many pictures or videos of the original plug, but it should all start making sense once you do the conversion. I would advise doing the driver's seat first. The reason for that is it's the most simple. It doesn't have the occupancy sensor. If you jump in and do the passenger seat, the colors and everything coming together might confuse you at first, whereas if you do the driver's seat, it's pretty straightforward. You've got a positive and negative. You'll have a purple cable for the M emblem lighting up, which I'll show in the next part of the video. And you just have the airbag and the pretension on there. So it's pretty straightforward. The passenger seat has got an occupancy sensor in it that will pick up whether a passenger's in the car or not. The problem with the M4 seats is that doesn't work with the E9 series loom, or at least I haven't figured it out. So we have to code it out using NCS Expert. Now, it can be a bit of a headache if you've not used it before. I managed to get my head around it in the end. 
it's not something I want to get into on this video because I think there will be people that will cover it better but essentially I will put the codes in in the description and you're going to need to turn off the occupancy sensor and if you've got a facelifter car you're going to need to remove the head restraint feature from the original E9 series that's in the uh, camber system. So with the M4 seats on the bench I would now advise taking the purple cable on the M4 seat, snipping the small pin plug on there and using like an adapter or a quick fix connection because you're not going to be able to use the original plug because the E9 series seat doesn't have a lighting luma standard because the E9 seats don't light up but it's a really nice feature I wired it in to the rear puddle lighting so that when I unlock or unlock the car or any of the lights come on the seats will slowly gradually light up and then as you lock it they turn off really nice little feature but like I say you can't use the main harness plug for that you do have to sort of run a separate positive the seat is earth so it literally just needs a switch live positive which as I say I've done from the puddle lighting in the rear the next thing like I said at the beginning of the video is you'll need to move the seat module from the E9 series seat over to the M4 seat it's just a couple of tabs that hold it in place I think there's about six connections on the bottom it's plug and play no repinning no chopping it goes straight in and if you don't swap over the modules, even though they look the same, you will lose the heated seat function and the memory option. Now, the good news is because I've swapped over the E91s and I do have the white modules from the LCI car, everything works like factory. I've got three stage for heated seats and everything works like an original car. I've got the memory function buttons that all work on the side of the seat and it also works with the key. So if someone gets in in a pre-setting on someone else's configuration for the spare key, it will work like an original car, which is brilliant. That's the reason I wanted to go with these over bucket seats or anything like that because I use the car every day. I do like the heated seats in the winter. It's nice to have it like an OEM Plus. While on the subject of OEM Plus, as you can probably see, we do sit a little bit lower now. It's about 15 millimeter and I've got another little trick that I think might lower it some more. But you can see now that my eye height is in line with the steering wheel. I've got proper shoulder support on the seat and I, I prefer them so much more over the E9 series sort of lounge seats that it comes with as factory. And they also just look incredible. Again, especially with the light up feature and you can still get in the back. So it's still a practical car. Lever wise, it looks pretty similar to the rear and the door cards, I'm going to be honest, it doesn't stand out at all, which is really nice. It looks like it works, so that might be a slightly different colour in the M4 seats compared to the E9 series. I did try to fit the rear seats. Now, the problem was because I've got a coupe, the centre console runs all down the back is one piece and it's completely different to the M4 seats. And if you've watched any of the other videos I put together, I always like to make sure that anything I do can be turned back to standard. I don't like permanently chopping anything or modifying it that it's gone too far because it is a competition car. I think over time, these will become more and more collectible. And as much as I love the M4 seats, and I think they're a mega upgrade, the next owner might not think so. So this conversion, like I say, is pretty foolproof. The only wire that you need to cut is in the rear footwell puddle lighting. And that literally is just to snip in and tee off for the rear badge lighting but if you don't want that feature again it's not something you have to worry about if you don't want to chop into the loom you just don't have the light up feature on lock and unlock the final thing really uh, when you do fit the seats because of how close they are to the center armrest they don't press on it as such but they do get a squeak so if you're going over bumps the sheets move and you hear the squeak which can be a little bit annoying i just bought some felt pads which double side on to the center console and as you can see now absolutely no squeaking at all the seat still goes forward and backwards so it's no permanent modification and again if you do sell the car and want to turn it back to standard you just peel the double sided off and obviously wipe the residue glue away so hopefully you enjoyed the video guys, I'd say the E92 is changing massively now, it's really starting to take off, I've got some new brakes to install, nothing crazy because I've done that with the E46 and 3 I've got the 8 pots on there, it squeals too much for daily use, I want dust seals in there where it's just maintenance free, so we're going to be going 80 discs all round. DS2500 pads and braided lines and just dot four fully synthetic brake fluid. So I've never really felt on the road that the E90 brakes have let me down. But to be fair, I've never pushed it like I do the E46. And now I've got the 4S tyres on there. I think the weak point in the system will be the brake. So stay tuned, guys. As I say, the uh, car is evolving. Looking forward to seeing what the rest of the summer holds for it. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you give us a like and a subscribe. It helps us doing what we're doing. And like I say, you can just click on the link to subscribe to the channel. Till next time, thanks for watching.